Hi, welcome to the Education Law Virtual Classroom. This lecture gives an overview of the duty of care that teachers and school boards owe to their students and deals with the basic legal principles of the duty of care, negligence, as well as control and supervision in schools. The cases from different countries used to illustrate the duty of care of teachers and school boards must be dealt with an awareness and consideration of national legislation. Parents entrust their children to the care and control of the teachers and the school. When teachers and school boards are negligent and pupils are injured in the school, they breach their duty of care. To avoid being held liable for negligence, the legal duty of care of the teacher and the school board is discharged through the pedagogical duty of care and supervision, which is exercised through control and discipline if needed. We will now look at the test applied by courts when determining the standard of care in particular cases. The cases illustrate the difficulty for a national judge when applying the law to a wide variety of circumstances in the educational sphere and the standard of care which varies according to the circumstances of an individual case. In the discharge of the duty of care, it is essential to establish that the school had an effective system of supervision in place and that the effective system of supervision was being implemented at a specific time. The degree of care required and the corresponding exercise of the supervision alters with the circumstances and depends on a variety of factors, including the age of the pupils, the mental maturity of pupils, the nature of the current activity, the opportunity the teacher had, if any, to prevent harm or injuries. Of course, the law does not require teachers to control every pupil every minute of the school day. The exception is if there is some reason to arouse suspicion or to be put on the alert. The standards of the duty of care applied by the courts tend to be the care exercised by a reasonable person placed in those particular circumstances. This is generally one of reasonableness and not perfection. Negligence of a teacher is a tort. The constitutive elements of tort are a breach of duty of care imposed upon the teacher by law, which results in harm to the pupil. Thus, to be actionable before the court, the injury suffered by a pupil must comprise four elements. A duty imposed upon the teacher by law, a breach of duty, causation, and injury suffered by the pupil. Negligence may arrive from a positive act or from an omission if it comprises these four elements. Teachers have a duty of care towards their students while they are in the schoolroom, on the playground, or elsewhere on the school premises during the course of the school day. The courts usually require a higher degree of supervision when pupils are instructed in the classroom than when they are on the playground during school breaks. The duty of care of teachers normally ceases when the pupils are properly dismissed from the school premises. Allowing 500 pupils to be supervised by only one teacher on the school playground could constitute negligent omission by a school authority to take reasonable steps to protect pupils. Inadequate rugby coaching or instruction or failing to advise parents of the risks of serious injury in rugby football could constitute negligent omission. Teachers and school authorities will not be held liable for every accident that may occur in a school. The court accepts that some accidents happen despite the implementation of control and supervision by teachers. However, teachers have a higher degree of care when pupils are involved in a sport and the risk of injury is higher. Thus, teachers have a duty of strict supervision of pupils in the swimming pool. When pupils with disabilities are involved, the degree of supervision required may be greater than what is normally applied. There is also a possibility of legal action against the school authority for failure to make provision for special needs. Court rulings on educational malpractice include cases when the school allegedly fails to educate rudimentary skills. Also, incorrect markings of examination papers could ground an action in the court where this results in the loss of a place in a higher education institution or a job. When accidents arise as a result of structural defects of school buildings and infrastructure, the liability rests with the occupier of the premises, who is generally the school. The school board may limit the ambit of its potential liability for third persons by express agreement or by prominently displaying notices at the entrances of school premises which bring attention to the issue and on the condition that they are reasonable in all the circumstances.